Welcome to our service of Parish Communion for today, which is Bible Sunday, when we reflect particularly on the Word of God, the Word of God that we hear in church, the Word of God that we take into our hearts and which guides us in our everyday lives. You're most welcome if this is your first time or whether it's the umpteenth time that you've joined us for one of our online services. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hid, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we come to a time of penitence. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. Let us therefore confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you pardon and forgiveness of all your sins, time for amendment of life and the grace and strength of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Collect for today. Merciful God, teach us to be faithful in change and uncertainty, that trusting in your word and obeying your will, we may enter the unfailing joy of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now we have our Bible readings. This morning's epistle is taken from St Paul's letter to the Colossians, chapter 3. Paul places the word of Christ at the centre of the Christian life. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness and patience. Bear with one another and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you almost also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom, 
and with gratitude in your heart sing psalms, hymns and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. This is the word of the Lord. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Reading from Matthew chapter 24, Jesus teaches that his word will last forever. Jesus said, Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and with great glory. And he will send out his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. Also, when you see all these things, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. This is the Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my lips and the thoughts of all our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I first became aware of the passage that we had read to us for our New Testament reading from Colossians some 40 years ago. I know that because I was so struck with it at the time that I wrote it in a notebook and put the date on it. And so I won't say that it's continually lived with me throughout the time since then, but it's always been there and it's always been a source of great refreshment and encouragement, especially in relation to reading the Bible, applying the Bible to everyday life, and remembering the really important things that the Bible and indeed the whole of our Christian faith teaches us. So I'm going to talk a bit about this passage this morning, and particularly verses 16 and 17. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom. And with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms, hymns and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word and deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Let the word of God dwell in you richly. That's what Bible Sunday is all about. Not simply about reading the Bible, not even simply for organisations like the Bible Society, which we support, making the Bible available in different ways to different people in different countries sometimes involving translation, sometimes distribution, sometimes different ways of presenting the Bible, particularly in the Western world where the Bible and indeed the Christian faith is tending to be marginalised. Not any of those things, but simply for each of us as Christians, absorbing the teaching that we receive from the Bible and letting it dwell within our hearts richly. In other words, it's not something we do reading the Bible or hearing the Bible in church. It's not something we do as a kind of obligation. It's something we do because it inspires us. It literally gives us the spirit in our own hearts and therefore in our own lives. 
with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God. Of course, one of the great sadnesses of the pandemic as far as it relates to church services is not simply not being able easily to join all together and in this church to sit huddled up together in our pews, but the fact that we can't sing hymns or songs. It's lovely to listen to the choir singing them for us on our online services and it's lovely to have the small choir present for our actual services, but it's not the same. It's not the same as us all joining in, worshipping God with our voices in praise through song. Whatever you do, in word and deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus. You've probably heard me talk about the great composer Joseph Haydn before. I can't get enough of his work and I can't get enough of what lay behind his work. Starting every single composition that he wrote with the words, in the name of God. And at the end of each work, when he'd completed them, thanks be to God. Everything he did, it seems, was dedicated to God and everything that we do, however trivial it seems, however boring it might appear to us, doing everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ brings something different to it. It's what Paul thought and said. He tried his best to do what he was guided by the Spirit to do and for all of it to do it in the name of the Lord Jesus. It's an attitude, really. Again, it's not an obligation. It's something that if we really believe it, may change our lives because it transforms every task into something holy. I used to think a lot and do quite a lot of work in relation to the importance of God in our everyday lives, thinking particularly about people who spent many of their waking hours at work in all kinds of different jobs and how it was not that they were holy only on a Sunday but that they were holy whatever they did wherever they did it when they were at work and again I believe it's transformative to us if we consider that work is something God-given if we consider that work is something that we do because it brings glory to God, it makes us think about our work, it makes us put our work into the context of what we find in the Bible, what we say in our prayers, what we hear in sermons. It binds it all together. It makes it something special. Not all of us will be now working for money. Not all of us will be necessarily working outside our homes at all, but even within our homes, the work that we do can be sacred. Not because it's particularly pious, not because it's particularly exciting, not because every moment we're doing it, we're thinking holy thoughts. But the idea is that whatever we do, we do it in the name of the Lord Jesus. How might that be if we were all able to manage that? Perhaps we'd complain less. Perhaps we'd find this time of anxiety and worry less anxious, less worrying. We'd know that whatever we're going through, Jesus is with us. And finally, throughout this passage, the idea of being thankful to God is there. If we do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, then we are automatically giving thanks to God the Father through that same Jesus. And is that not what Christians above many things are called to do, to give thanks to God, even at a time such as this? This is a time for thankfulness for the blessings he has given us the blessings of our relationships, 
of our families, of our friends, of even those people who we can't see but who we can keep in contact with. Thanksgiving for the material world around us, for the beauty of the earth, for the bounty of the crops and all the food that is available to us day in, day out in our supermarkets and other shops. Thankfulness for what we have and sometimes for what we don't have. Thankfulness that we are enabled and encouraged and drawn to God by his love through Jesus. What could be better than that? So let me commend this reading to you. If you've received it by email, why not print it out? Cut that reading out, stick it somewhere where you may see it from time to time. Read it, let your heart surround it and let it surround your heart with these wonderful ideas. Earlier on in the passage, we were told to clothe ourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could do that all the time? And we can move closer to that if we have our eyes fixed on Jesus, as Hebrews says, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. If we have our eyes on the cross, remembering what he achieved for us by dying for us. And with those things in mind or in sight, how could we not be thankful? How could we not want to praise God all the time? How could we not want to, whatever we do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him? So to him who sits upon the throne, be praise and glory and honour and power, now and always. Amen. And now we have the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now we have our intercessions. Father God, this Bible Sunday, we thank you that you have revealed yourself to us through the life of your son Jesus and through the words of the scriptures. We ask for a better understanding of your teachings so that we may be equipped to do your work. We pray that your word will be known throughout the world so that everyone can read it in their own language. We give thanks for organisations such as the Bible Society and for the varied work they do at home and abroad to introduce the Bible to people's hearts and minds. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the church worldwide and its message in the scriptures. We pray that all may know the true love of our Lord Jesus Christ and be confident to call themselves Christians. We give thanks for our church here in our parish and we thank our ministry team and all people who work so hard to keep us connected and all those who are preparing for the appointment of our new rector. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks and praise for the world we live in and for the wonders of creation as we see the changing colours of autumn in our local area. 
We pray for our local community. We pray for all those who work in our parish, in our schools, our shops, our local surgery and businesses. And we remember children and all school staff on half-term holidays next week. May they return refreshed to the challenges of a busy and difficult time for schools across the country. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our leaders at both national and local levels as they try to see a way forward in the growing problems of dealing with COVID as winter approaches. We pray for all people across the country who are facing new restrictions and for anyone anxious about their future. We give thanks for the work of medical teams, scientists, and all those working in hospitals and care homes and in the community to combat the spread of the virus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those in our parish who are suffering in mind, body or spirit. We pray for all those named on the notice sheet and we bring to mind anyone we are particularly concerned about in this anxious time. May you bring healing and peace to all who are unwell or unhappy in any way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember all those who have recently died. May you bring comfort to their friends and families. We remember those known to us who have died, whose anniversary falls at this time. Today, we pray especially for the upcoming All Souls service and for all those whose names will be read out at that service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we offer you these prayers, we thank you, Lord, that we have become a loved and chosen people. We pray that all we say and do may be carried out in the name of Jesus and to his praise and glory. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of that peace. And now we have our first hymn.
be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Christ is the bread of life. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until you come in glory. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty, ascent, mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of all the saints may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us peace. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. 
We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table, but you, Lord, are the God of our salvation and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we, with the whole company of Christ, may sit and eat in your kingdom. Draw near with faith. God of all grace, your Son Jesus Christ fed the hungry with the bread of his life and the word of his kingdom. Renew your people with your heavenly grace, and in all our weakness sustain us by your true and living bread, who is alive and reigns now and for ever. Amen. Let us offer ourselves in service to God. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Now we have our final hymn. peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and those you love and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>